a virgin she wasn't even she was just still planning her wedding she had not even gotten married not to talk of giving birth to a child but god had a new plan a new agenda a new testimony a new song praise the name of the lord
Let your glory fill our lives, let it fill our hearts, and let it be shown forth to the world, that you may draw men and women to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Good evening, brethren. I hope your day has been good. We we'll bless the name of the Lord for a time like this to be able to share in His presence. And I thank God for the privilege to bring the word to us this evening. And I, I believe God has a word for someone, for every one of us, and it will take us to our next level in the name of Jesus. We will hear your testimonies, and the church of God will be proud, and the church of God will move higher, and we go higher, even in these times, in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, this evening, we'll be discussing the revealing of songs. We'll be discussing the revealing of songs. 
God is in the process. He's revealing his sons. I want to believe there are many of us whom God is eager to release, to reveal and show forth to the world. We will start by looking at Romans chapter 6. Remember, the topic is revealing of sons, the revealing of sons, the showing forth, the declaration, the manifestation of sons. From Romans chapter 6, we're going to start reading from verse 3. The Bible says, Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the death by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We are still remembering and walking all of our lives in the knowledge that Christ rose from the dead. And our faith does not rest here on earth. It goes beyond the earth. The scripture says he was buried and he was resurrected. But now we see something else. We, you and I, as many of us are believing and have been baptized into Jesus Christ. Said we were buried with him. The day you were submerged. We are buried with him in death. But as we arose, it wasn't us that arose. It was Christ in us, the hope of glory. It was God arising so that we may walk in newness of life. As we got up out, it was not just you and I. It was Christ arising from the dead. I want you to see something in Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, we're going to take it from verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 12. It says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son of his love. Brethren, when we, we are, you know, when we are, we are baptized, you are submerged, you have died. As you arise, what is taking place is this. God has qualified us. He's transferring us. He's transforming our lives. He's transferring us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. The son. Whom he loves. There's a movement. We no longer belong to this earth. We belong to those who are the kingdom of sons, who are sons of the kingdom, who are sons of the Father. By that resurrection from the dead. Remember, oftentimes just remember, oh, Christ was already this period. Yes, he did. But you and I have also resurrected with him. And this was done so that you and I will live in newness of life. I want to show you an example of what newness of life means. Let's look at Luke 24. Luke chapter 24. We're going to start from verse 36. Luke 24 from verse 36 to 43. You see, when Jesus rose from the dead, is an example of who we are now. He rose from the dead. He had some time with his disciples. Let us see a snapshot of what newness of life could mean. Luke 24 from verse 36. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened. And suppose they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a, flesh, a spirit does not have flesh and bone, as you see I have. 
And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe for joy now, and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. He took it and ate in, his pre in their presence. Praise the Lord. Jesus arose. Just like you and I arose. When we finished the baptism and we got up out. He came into a room. A locked room. Through the wall or through the roof. I don't know. He just appeared. <laughs> he just came in. They were thinking, I see a spirit. He said, no, I'm not a spirit. Touch my hands. I have flesh and bone. Brethren, we have flesh and bone, but we are not flesh. We still have flesh and bones, but we are not flesh. He came in. Touch my hands. See, it is I. When they were still doubting, said, do you have food? He asked for food and he ate it. Spirits cannot eat. They can't even handle. He took it, he ate it, and then he began to speak to them. That's an example of newness of life. The newness of life also referred to different things for us here on earth. If you look at an example for, for the disciples, <laughs> Philip was moved by the Spirit, was carried by the Spirit. He went to preach to the eunuch. When he finished his work there, he was moved back. To where come anything to go to. Paul was passing. His shadow was healing people. Newness of life. They were shipwrecked. A very poisonous snake. Beaten. He shook it off. Brother, he didn't pray. They didn't fast and pray. They didn't lay hands and anoint. He shook it off and continued. Newness of life. Newness of life. That you and I have in the name of Jesus. Newness of life. All of this he did. That you and I might experience newness of life. What does that mean for us? Let's start the first one from verse 9. The first thing there is this. Though you and I, we have a reason by baptism, we we'll still have flesh. You see, the Bible says, who we are does not yet appear. But this is who we are. It didn't say who we will be. It said, but you are sons. Romans chapter 8, starting from verse 9. Romans chapter 8, I want to start from verse 9. But you are not in the, in the flesh. But in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Listen to this. What makes us spirit is not the absence or presence of flesh. But the presence of the spirit of God. Romans 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The first thing, we are not flesh. We are spiritual beings, sons in the class and in the kingdom of sons. Why are we spirits? Not because of the absence of flesh. Jesus rose up in that newness of life. He could pass through the world and come in and eat fish. He had flesh, he had bones. But he said, you are spirits. 
if the spirit of God lives in you. If you are born again, the spirit of God lives in you. And much more, that same spirit will begin to upgrade our flesh. You know what they call upgrading? To upgrade our flesh. No, we are at this level. It's upgrading our flesh. Just like when we talk about that, the mortality will be swallowed up by immortality. It's upgrading our flesh, pumping life into a mortal body. I love that scripture. Many may have said, oh, it's not really a mortal body. It was clear, emphatic, that it was giving life to our mortal bodies, upgrading them. If you go on to verse 12, we will see why these things are happening. Therefore, we, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeed of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. As we are upgrading our bodies, we mature. That upgrading comes from obeying the Spirit. The obedience that cuts off the dead flesh, pushes it aside, pumps in life, and upgrades it into a life, into a body that will arise and terminate. I can match with the term newness of life. You can go on for years not being sick. You can go on for years. Soon as they sick, touch your body, they get healed. You don't need to pray because something, life is flowing in the body. Because someone, the Spirit of God is actively pumping life to your mortal bodies. Because you obey Him. Because you obey Him. Now, why is this happening? It's crucial we understand. It's not to go outside and make noise. Oh, I'm a child. You know who I am? Verse 18, Romans 8 from verse 18. For I consider that the suffering of these present times are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Brethren, there's a revelation coming. God is going to reveal his sons. Verse 19. For the annex expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Not the born again. Not those who come to church. But the sons who obey the Spirit. For the creation was subject to futility. Not willingly. But because of him who submitted it in hope. Because the creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Into the glorious liberty of the train of God. What is the intent? Remember. God has saved us, washed us, and we identified with him in baptism. And he said, through that, he has transformed us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Now he's sending us forth to go and begin to do that for others. You see someone under the bondage of decay, you break the bondage of decay by the spirit. Transform the person from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light as he has said our Lord Jesus. And we begin to teach them promises of God, words of God that will cause them to be transformed even as we are into sons. That is the intent. We break the bondage of decay, we cause them to be transformed. So all of this why Jesus has died and resurrected. But we have also resurrected with him. We have moved on to become sons. We are people God is going to reveal to the purpose and the intent that the bondage of decay of anyone or people that come in contact with will be broken. And they will be moved into the kingdom of sons. 
adding songs to the body of Christ. How does God want to show us what? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 1 from verse 3. It says, Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. He said something clearly. He was declared to be the son of God. There's a declaration coming for you and I. God is eager. The world is waiting for you and I to be declared as sons of God with power. Not just speaking in tongues alone. Declaration to be sons with power, signs following. But there's something. The Bible says, declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. It's as if because of the spirit of holiness, he was declared the power. It's as if in the measure of the spirit of holiness is the measure of the declaration with power. So if you and I will be declared with power, like Jesus' words. We need to have the spirit of holiness, constant K in our lives. Because that was what will bring a, brought about the declaration, the manifestation, the revealing of the Son of God. In doing that, we need to remember 2 Corinthians 7. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Brethren, as children of God, we can commit sin and he will forgive us. That's the truth. We will ask him, Father, please forgive me, he will. But how many times will we be coming back to him for the same thing? After he has given us the power to overcome sin. 2 Corinthians 7, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises that we will be the one to break the bondage. That we want to transform others into the kingdom of sons. Having these promises be Lord, let us cleanse. Simple terminology. We didn't say go to the mountains. By the spirit of God that is giving life to your mother bodies. By the spirit who we are following. Who we are being led to become sons. By that spirit, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Mm, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. As we go on this journey, the fear of God is important. Not fear in the sense of punishment, but fear in the sense of reverence. But fear in the sense of, ah, God has bought all of this for us. He has done all of this for us. I cannot sell him short. He died on the cross. That I might be set free from the body of sin and decay. Whenever you go back to it, it's like you're saying, what he did on the cross was not enough to set me free. That will not be a testimony in the name of Jesus. But when we fear God, we respect him, we realize all he took him to achieve this for us, we decide not to sell him short. We stand by the Spirit, cut off the flesh, and we see ourselves perfecting holiness. May that be our testimony from today henceforth in Jesus' name. As I try to round off, when we perfect this holiness, it will lead to us being declared to be sons. We won't just be celebrating how Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He rose on it. I also rose. I transformed to become a son. As a son, I am going forth. He's declaring me, just like he's declared his son, Jesus Christ, who was the first among us. He was the first among many brothers. He's declaring all of us to be sons with power. Because we have the spirit of holiness whom he has given to us. Second Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. We'll be taking it from verse 2. 
2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. The Bible told us that law came from Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus. Now grace, think of grace, not just a favor. Think of the enabling power. Paul said, I worked harder, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Now he's saying, grace and peace be multiplied. Assume you are at this level of holiness or righteousness, or what, and you need to keep growing, growing. How will it be multiplied? In the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As we seek to know him, see, as his divine power has given us all things, that spirit in us that transforms us from flesh to spirit, that gives life to our mortal bodies and enables us to live newness of life, his divine power gives us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Even as far back as the Old Testament, in Ezekiel 36, in verse 27, he says something. If you will obey me, he said, I will change your heart, change your heart, and I will move you to obey me. There comes a power from the inside, leading you to, it's easy to do the things God requires, not because we can, but because he gives us the power inside by his spirit, and he is moving us to obey him. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through our knowledge. Open your Bible, read it, spend time with him in prayer, not to speak in tongues and not hear back, not to finish and not hear back. Spend time with him to hear back and understand. Let him be the one teaching you the scriptures. Not some um, concordance somewhere. Let him teach you, expound the Bible to you. So by which we have been given great and exceeding promises. The promises are in the world. If you eat something bad, a poison will not harm you. That why Paul didn't even bother to pray. A snake passed on his hand. People thought he was gone. He didn't pray. He just shook it up into the fire and continued what he was doing. And that was the end of it. There are great promises he has given to you and I as sons of God that we will speak a word here on earth and it will be so, it will be settled. You can forgive someone's sin, it's settled. You can raise the dead, do different things, heal the sick, it is settled. There is a great and precious promise he has given to us that through this you will partake in the divine nature as we perform, as we see the manifestation of these promises. People perceive the God nature in us. There will be a manifestation with power, with power, with power. That you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped. So the issue of not being in the flesh again is gone. It's done over with. That is why the essence of 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 comes in. We have escaped corruption by the, in the flesh through lost saints. Because by the Spirit, we are a constantness in the divine nature, a constantness in godliness that enables us each time, wherever we appear, God is declaring us himself, this is my son with power. Let that be a testimony in the name of Jesus. Finally, how do we get there? From verse 5. The same second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5. It says something. But also for this reason, giving all diligence, say paying attention to this. These promises are so wonderful. Add to your faith, virtue, goodness. Add to virtue, knowledge. Add to knowledge, self-control. Act to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. You may think godliness will be the end of it. 
but said to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. The end of it is love. You may be so godly, you begin to be holier than thou. But Bible says, speaking the truth in love, we build up each other. If someone is caught in a sin, he said, restore the person, watching yourselves, not feeling as if you are above everything. Out of brotherly kindness and love that always seeks to build up everyone. Verse 8 is crucial. He says, for if these things are yours and are bound, so I'm also putting the increase and an increasing measure. You are not static. You have it this level today. By tomorrow, we are going higher. We are going higher. We are increasing. We are increasing. If these things are used and are bound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Many children of God are barren. Many children of God know God for many years, but have no fruit. May that not be a testimony in the name of Jesus. As God lives, we will be the ones who he will declare with power to be sons. We will be the ones who will say you are effective and productive in your knowledge of God. And knowledge of God comes to a point where it goes beyond us. We are established as sons. We go forth in those promises and we begin to break the bowels of decay, transforming men and women into the kingdom of sons. That is the intent why we rose from the dead with Christ. That he can declare us with, as, with power as sons. Verse 9 says, For he that lacks these things, it's short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his old sins. May that not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to me, to you, abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. That scripture gives me much hope. It addresses the earth here. It addresses the hereafter. It says, if we follow these things, step by step, follow him, keep at it, so we will not stumble. No matter what they throw at us, the same way Jesus walked through the earth and he did not sin, we will not stumble in the name of Jesus. I most can I take that as a just a brief word of prayer. Father, carry me through. I will not stumble. I will not be among the sons that are ineffective. I will not be among the sons that are unproductive. Carry me through, mold me, transform me into the son that is effective, that has the spirit of holiness, whom you can declare with power to be a son. Amen. He said, after that, an entrance will be open for us in heaven. There will be a joyful welcome for us in heaven. May that be for every one of us in Jesus' name. I want to speak to you today. If you have not given your life to Jesus, this is way above you for now. But the same thing he has done for every one of us who have given our life to Jesus Christ. He can do for you today. The same way he took us, washed us, transformed us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his sons, he can do for you today. If only you raise up your hand and tell him, Father, forgive me all my sins. Forgive me for running on my own. Forgive me for thinking I knew what to do with the life you gave me. Father, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Accept me to the beloved. Mold me to become a son. Grant me your Holy Spirit. To lead me aright. And at the end of it, Father, declare me to be a son with power. Let me join your end time army that will march forth without breaking ranks. 
people he would declare with power to be sons in the name of Jesus. He was beginning to pray to him, Father, Father, I submit my spiritual and body to you as a son who has resurrected. Lord, take me through. Carry me through. Grant me the spirit of holiness that I, by the spirit of God, will keep my path. Will keep my path walking by the spirit perfecting holiness out of the fear of God, perfecting holiness out of the fear of God, perfecting holiness out of the fear of God, so that there will be this in me, that spirit of holiness from you, that wherever I appear, wherever I come, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, wherever I appear, that you can gladly declare me as a son with power. And as we raise up Jesus, let many be drawn to your kingdom and to the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Brethren, go forth in the spirit, in that grace, in the mighty promises. Break the bondage to decay and granted by the spirit of God, I will bring many into righteousness. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Do have a wonderful evening and God bless you. Amen. Thanks be to God for this great worship service today. And I believe you have been tremendously blessed. I pray that your blessings multiply exceedingly in Jesus' mighty name. I want to encourage you to give an offering to God. For God loves a cheerful giver. To give your offering, pay your tithe your pledges or support the work of God in Glory Worship Center, please visit us online at www.rccggwc.org. Click on Giving and follow the process. Alternatively, you can do a direct transfer from your phone or tablet to the church's GTB account number 0010425841. Please indicate the type of offering with an appropriate narration. God bless you as you give. We invite you to also join us online at any of our services through our website www.rccggwc.org. You can join us on Sundays for our celebration service which we title Clouds of Glory Service. On Tuesdays, you can join us at 6.30 p.m. for our Digging Deep service, which is our Bible study service. And on Thursday at 6.30 p.m., you can join us for our Faith Clinic service, which is our prayer service. God bless you as you come. We encourage you to join us every first Tuesday of the month at 6.30 a.m. for a special one-hour prayer service titled Divine Intervention Service. It is conducted by Pastor Peter Olawale, the Special Assistant to the RCCG General Overseer on Prayer. You will be mightily blessed as you join the services. God bless you mightily. You can reach us on any of the telephone numbers scrolling on the screen for counseling, prayers, or help. God bless you as you do so. Shall we pray? I pray that the word of God you have heard today profits you continually in Jesus' name. The presence of God will abide with you always. Signs and wonders will always be your portion in Jesus' name. The Lord accept your offerings and reward you abundantly. And may you continue to shine brightly in Jesus' mighty name. Until the next time you join us, keep basking in God's glory.